I'm Stephanie, and today it's time for Mr. Hopper's next big adventure. <laughs> he's had his first home movie, and now he's ready to find a friend. We're going to make him one today using wool ease in the forest green heather for the body arms. We'll be using Red Heart Super Saver Gold for the eyeballs. We will be using the plastic safety eyes. But look at this. And he even is going to have trunks. And this is Red Heart Super Saver Stripes yarn. That's all we need, except for some polyfill and your basic tools. We're using the 22 needle Addy circular knitting machine. We're gonna get going on this really quick here. I'm going to show you step-by-step step everything so that you'll be able to make your own fun little hopper. Oh, and, whoop, and there's his little trunks. His little trunks are super easy. They're just a tube that's been stitched down here in the middle so that there's leg holes. Isn't that cute? To make Mr. Hopper, they are just straight tubes. All of the shaping that you see here is done by stitching. Two tubes that are 30 rounds long. We have two tubes that are 20 rounds long and two tubes that are 25 rounds long. And that's all it takes. I have stitched these together using just the string going across, the thread across. That also helps with the shaping. See how we've got that lovely froggy shape there? If you wanted, you could make the eyes smaller. I just happen to really like these big Google eyes. I'm probably going to do another one with smaller eyes and see about making it looking a little bit more like that famous Mr. Mr. Frog and Mr. Toad. I really like my funky, weird little frog. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying your day. I hope that you are having some fun. Let me know if you are enjoying by clicking the like button and leaving me a comment. We are doing this with a standard back and forth. Please forgive the squeakiness of my machine. <laughs> I broke a needle, I replaced it, and it hasn't been quiet since. If you know how to fix that squeak, let me know. All right, that's my fast on. I'm going to reset my counter to zero. And now... We're going to do 30 rounds. We're going to continue with making one more tube of 30 rounds. Then I'm going to make two tubes that are 20 rounds and two tubes that are 25 rounds. And I'll meet you back here when I have all of my rounds done. And then I'll show you how I make the eyeballs. All right, now we're going to make the eyes. The eyes are just five rounds total. I'm going to cast on and then do four rounds. So. Go around once and take it off. Now you're gonna go, but how does something so small make a full eye. Well, I'll show you. Let me get the second one all knitted up and then we'll make the eyes first because that's the, really, that's the trickiest bit of the whole thing. Make the eyes and everything else just sort of falls into place. So now we have two eyeballs, two body parts, two legs, and two arms. I'm going to move the knitting machine out of the way and we are going to get this little guy all put together. All right, here we go. So we are going to make the eyeballs first, just because that is like 
one of the most fun little magic tricks. Two washers, two eyes. To make the eyes, you've got these really light and frilly type of pieces, right? We're gonna need a little bit of stuffing. This is just crafter's polyfill. So I'm just going to pull on that cast off edge string and start tightening it down. Before I get it too tight though, I'm gonna stick my little eyeball piece, uh, my, my pupil in, all right? And right now, doesn't that look like a pretty flower? <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in and tighten it down and put the washer on. Because this is the best time to do it when you can get it all flat and you can get right in there, that's on nice and tight now. So now I'm going to put my needle on, bring this, this yarn through to the inside. Like that. I'm going to run around and tighten this as much as I can. So put that in and really tighten it. Don't break your yarn though. Don't break the yarn. See, just really get it tight. What that does is it tightens down that center and now I'm just going to make a little knot. This is all on the inside of the, the eyeball anyway. You're not going to see it. Leave a little bit of a tail, just like that. Now I'm going to take my little wad of polyfill and I'm just going to kind of hold it in here and grab the end of the cast on and start tightening it down in a circle like this. Look at that. Now I've got an eyeball and this would work perfectly for anything that you would be making, you know, eyeballs for or for the centers of flowers, or for, you know, pretty much anything that you need something that's a round ball. Now, if you didn't want to use safety eyes, you could tighten this all down. Then you could stitch black embroidery floss, black yarn, whatever you wanted to, to make the eyeball. And then use a little spark of white in the black area to give you that shine look. So we're gonna get the second eye made. Now we've got two eyes. Now we are going to take our body pieces. You have to be careful here, and if, if you need to, mark the ones that go together with the same color stitch markers. That way you don't have to worry about getting confused. <laughs> That's just a little trick. What we're gonna do now is I am going to kind of snug this down just a little bit, just so it's tidy looking. I want the cast off edge at the top just because there's not as much um, loopy, floofy, extra. You see how this is a little bit floofier? This is going to be down at the bottom of the body. Let's get this guy stitched together. My bent darning needle, a pair of scissors, some extra yarn, and stuffing. You don't need a ton of stuffing for this. This is way more than I need, but I'm just going to set that right here. Get these lined up. I'm coming down eight stitches from the top here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's where the eyes are going to go. The eyes are up here at the top. But first what I wanna do is go ahead and get the body stitched together. 
just tidying up those ends just a little bit. There we go. We're going to stitch this together with a mattress stitch really quick. If you haven't seen the mattress stitch before, I've done it on pretty much every single video I've made here on YouTube <laughs> has a mattress stitch in it somewhere, but we'll do it again. Don't worry. I, I'm going to do it again here. I'm just taking a length of yarn, putting it on my needle. I like to go to the other end, put a slip knot, and then take a stitch marker and put it through that slip knot. And what that does is it makes it so if I pull too hard on my thread, the it's not going to pull out of my stitches because the stitch marker doesn't go through the loops. And now I'm just looking at this going, all right, my points, my ends are going that way. So as long as both of my columns have the end pointing the same direction, the V, we're good. When I'm doing my small projects like this, I like to go one stitch at a time. And it's going to be a little bit trickier to see it on this yarn, I think, but I think we'll make it. So you look for your V. Your Vs need to be pointing the same direction. You go in between the legs of the V here, and there is a bar. You're going to pick up that bar and pull your needle through it. Then you're going to come down to the other column. You're going to work your way back and forth across the columns. And doing this, you are going to end up with a lovely, almost invisible join. And I do this every single bar. If you don't want to, you could do every other bar, but with a toy, I like to have a little bit more security on my stitches. So I do every bar. I'm going to go down this edge here all the way to the bottom. I'm going to go down this edge here all the way to the bottom. I'm going to fold this. I'm going to come down eight, same as the other one right there. I'm going to come down eight and then I'm going to get this all mattress stitched together both sides and I will meet you back here. What we're going to do is get his eyes made. I am going to put a drawstring across here. The drawstring is going to go around and the reason for that is that we want it to shape this eye, these eye, eye sockets. I guess is what we'll say. You don't have to be absolutely perfect on every other stitch. Just, just don't go too far down. You want it to be right here at the, at the split for the eye sockets up here at the top. There's a lot of little fiddly details and I love the little details. This is not your super fast frog. You know, this is your middle of the road speed frog. What I'm going to do is pull this down like that and come across. See, I don't, I don't really mind how this all looks right now. I'm just trying to gather it up. Now I'm keeping a hold of the other end of the string. If you wanted to, you could put your, your slip knot in this and put a stitch marker on it. I'm just going to hold on to it, pulling it tight. And then I'm going to stitch across and kind of stitch through those gathers a little bit until I can get back to the other end. And then I'm just going to tie these in a knot. We will be tucking all of the threads to the inside. I'm going to use the long, the long thread right here, the long string to put the eyes in. And then we're going to be doing some adjusting. So you see what happens when you put that drawstring in like that, then you're able to start 
twisting for your eyes. And now I want to put my eyeball in. I'm just going to, this is just a quick placement, just sort of drop it in, pull it through. Not perfect, not in the absolute finished spot, but it gives me something to hold on to through the back like this as I am shaping the eyeball socket. So look at that. I just cinch down the end right there, cinch down the end and thread that needle. I should have threaded the needle before I cinched the end, but you know, it's what happens. This is all the creative process. Now what I'm doing is I'm stuffing that little ball right back into that, into that little socket. And I'm tightening this down. I'm going to make a couple stitches across the cinch. Right? And now what I want to do is go through the green into the eyeball, back up through the green. Okay. Through the green into the eyeball and back up through the green. Basically I'm doing a running stitch all the way around and that's going to keep the eyeball from slipping loose through the eyeball, back into the green. Now down here, this isn't cupped up around it, is it? We're going to be pulling up a layer of that green like this. See how we're getting that to come up around the eyeball? It's like putting a hoodie on the eyeball. <laughs> so now I'm going to reach down here. I'm going to pick up that inner layer of the, of the green. I'm going to go back into the yellow. I'm going to come back down to the green, pull it up and just work it around until you have the eyeball completely, completely in. Now, if it ends up not being perfectly centered. You need to be careful as you're doing this. If you notice this little guy, he's, he's got an eye that's kind of looking the other direction. I think frogs can do that. I think their eyes are a little bit independent of each other. So it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. But you do need to make sure that you get all the way around. You don't want it to, to only be halfway around the eyeball. So try and keep it sort of centered up as best you can. Now the uh, eyes right now are going to be looking straight at each other this way until we get some stuffing in and we shape the eye by twisting it and stitching it. Back here, it's going to get stitched to the body but we don't know where we want that until after we've got stuffing in. So I'm going to go ahead and get both eyes on and then we will stuff the body and get the eyes all finished being placed. So right at this point here, if you made this blue with white eyes and black with white eyeballs, you'd have a cookie monster. Look at that you would almost have a cookie monster. You could also do a different kind of frog, like a frog puppet. Or the yip yips. Boink. <laughs> okay, I amuse myself. I hope that I'm amusing you. If I am, please click that like button for me. And if you're finding value from this video, please click that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, and share the video with your friends, you know? I'd love to see more people find these fun videos and 
just bring more creativity into their lives. I'm going to bring that to here, get that out the same hole right there, tie this in a knot. I'm going to thread these back through. Just so the ends and the knot are trapped to the inside. Now we need to put some stuffing in before we can do any more shaping on the eyes. So I'm going to grab some stuffing, put that in. Remember, I like to put a wad of stuffing in and then sort of separate it with my fingers and stuff my stuffing. You don't really want to stuff this too, too tight. So this little guy, my stuffing is a little bit lighter down here at the bottom because I am going to be shaping this and mushing the stuffing around. Right now it looks like it could be a weird fish. <laughs> I don't know. My brain, I just, I see different things in these every time, in these little critters every time. So I'm tightening those down. I'm going to run my thread back through across to the other side, bringing it around through all of those gathers. I'll do the same with the other one, the other end. Cause what we're doing is we're sealing up this end here really well, trim it off. short end here from the drawstring, I'm going to just put it back through to the inside. Like that. Trim it off. This is the long cord from the drawstring. I'm going to use it to shape these eyes and get them facing forward instead of facing each other. <laughs> So what we'll do is we're going to twist these side to side like this and then tip it down. And at this point here, this is the, this is the time when your little froggy is going to start really getting their personality. So now I'm going to go back and forth between the eye and the body. So see how we're, we're already starting to get that coming forward, right? I'm going to make sure that I really get this attached between the eye and the body. But it is simple stitching. It's just going back and forth. Now I might come back and do a bit more uh, attaching the eye down onto the body a little bit more, but I want to get the other one first so I can see where, where they're going to land. Turn it over, come to the back. The back is where you're actually going to get this to attach more. So you're going to pick up in the back of the eye. You're going to pick up in the body and do that, you know, three or four stitches at least. You really want it to be attached. You don't want it to come loose and have his little eyes start popping around and, and staring at themselves. <laughs> so I can feel this wanting to twist a little bit. And I see that I didn't really catch it here very well in the front. So I'm going to bring my yarn back through to the front. And I'm going to pick up the body and then go into the eye socket, the base of the eye. And do that in a couple spots. There. That feels better. Tipped down just a little bit, I think. Maybe. Needs to be attached a little bit more over here. So I'm just going to run it back through. 
try and keep your longer running stitches going through the inside and not showing on the outside. But when you pick up a stitch and you pick up a stitch, it ends up becoming kind of invisible. So pick up a stitch from the body, pick up a stitch from the eye, pull it down. Right now, this little guy could be just about anything. What I'll be doing here is for the bottom of the feet, so I'm taking the, the feet now, the bottom of the feet, I am going, or the toes, I am going to actually close this up flat first. And I'm going to do that with the cast off thread. And I'm going to go back and forth through all of the loops. So I'm picking up a loop from the back. I'm picking up a loop from the front. Pick up a loop from the back and from the front. I can tighten it down just a little bit afterwards. I don't want to tighten it too much because I want this to be very flat to make it easier to do the, uh, the flippery toes, the flippery foot. But I'm just going back and forth. By going back and forth and picking up one stitch each time, picking up that loop, picking up that loop, it's just a bump with the, you know, that's the stitch right there. The cast off thread is going through it. And I'm just going to keep picking up those, those stitches. You're not going to lose a stitch. If you're, you know, if you don't pick up every single stitch, don't worry about it because we're not taking the cast off thread out. We're actually using it for, for running back through the stitches again but doing it back and forth. So we're getting a nice tidy edge without having to crochet. There's no crochet in this particular little project. All of the parts were made on the knitting machine. Isn't that cool? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten it just a little bit, but not too much. I'm not gathering it like a hat. Toe now has the stitching going across. I'm going to do that to the other one. When we're making the legs, you're going to want the thigh, the shin, and the foot, right? Make it the way you want it. I'm looking at this going, I want about five stitches up for the foot. One, two, three, four, five-ish. And I'm going to put a drawstring. So up from the toe, one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to go across. We are going to be folding and rolling this, this flat tube. So to make all of the shapes, we are folding and rolling. We are not stuffing this. The, all of the shaping is done just with the fabric that's already here. All of the, um, all of the stuffing that's in it is just the fabric from the knitting. This, this yarn is a, a good worsted weight. I'm going to fold it like this and tighten that down and run my, my needle back through. And right now you're going, but that doesn't look like a flipper. You're right. It doesn't. It will in a minute. But I'm just going to get my yarn back through here because what we're going to do is we are going to be stitching his foot down. We're, you see how these folds are coming in and they're kind of at a bit of an angle. We're going to stitch it down. This is the bottom of his foot. So we're going to basically stitch a V and that's going to give you his flat flippery foot. Take it out the backside here by those V, by the V. See, this is what I'm talking about, the V, how the folds of the foot, folds of that flipper. 
we want those to be stitched down flat. I'm just going to stitch between the that folded bit over and the back of the foot. I'm not coming through the front. And this can be whip stitch, this could be a running stitch. You just want it to end up being very flat. See how this is still bumped up, but that's really quite flat. So that's all rolled up funny still. You can even come back through here and stitch through the back of that just a bit. Get that nice and flat, go to the other side and stitch it down nice and flat. Don't pull too hard. If you pull too hard, you'll get your, your foot gathering in funny spots. If you are somebody who will pull too hard, I would suggest putting a knot on the, do one side then and knot it and then go and do the other edge. I'm usually pretty good about not, not pulling too hard. Now you're looking at this going, hmm, this is, this is still that doesn't look quite like a leg. That's true. Now what we're going to do is we are going to just choose one of these two sides and we are going to roll it. Just keep rolling it over and then pull the other side toward you. See how that makes a, a tighter looking leg? like that. And then I'm going to stitch about five stitches up. And it will come loose a little bit. Just stitch it tight. See, so now that just came all loose on me. I'm not worried about it. This is a project that does require a bit of manual dexterity. So if you have a problem with your hands doing this, just make it lighter. Don't, don't pull so hard. Just make it, um, you know, a little chubbier. I'm doing a whip stitch here. This is the back of the leg, but I am only going up about five, it's three, four, five. So let's see where we are here. So if I bend, okay, I see where his knee wants to bend. His knee wants to bend right about here. So I need to go about three more stitches to get to that point. I am going to pull this over again and then I am going to go across and go across. This is on the back of the leg. And I am going to let this hang out there. I did not actually get this tied tight yet. I'm going to take this, which was the other end, and just run it up through and out where the, the end of it is right there, like that. And now this is the thigh up here, right? I'm just going to gather this to get all of that ruffly yarn in. That's going to help us make his thigh because the thigh on the frog is bigger like that. I don't know which leg this is. I don't know if this is the left leg or the right leg yet. I won't know till both legs are done. <laughs> 
I'm going to finish up this leg. We're going to do one of the arms and then I will finish up all of the parts and come back and we'll show you all stitched together. Now I'm going to get one of the hands done and show you exactly what I do. I'm doing the same thing here where I am going to do the close it up using the back and forth picking up the loops. This is the cast off edge. That's the one I want for the hands. Now what we want to do is we are going to roll this up like a little sausage. I've got my needle coming off the top and I'm rolling this up super, super tight all the way right along that that end that we just closed off. And to start off with, it doesn't look like much. What I want to do is come down through where I want the hand to be. And if I tug just a little bit, you can see how we're already starting to get a little bit of shape in that hand. I want to stitch through here, holding it super, super tight and get a few stitches in that wrist area going all the way through from the front to the back, rolling it over front to the back and make sure that you get that folded over edge attached nice and snug. So you see what's going on here? We've got this bit right here that's the rolled over. This little bit right here, it's rolled over here and then you've got your the big bloppy bit of where the hand is. If we go through and put a, a piece of yarn right there, look at that. So if you, you're, we're sculpting the hand. So I'm going to go through here and put a couple stitches. Now my yarn is getting a little bit small, but look, just pulling it just like that, we get a little hand. Now this is not a frog hand. It's your froggy's hand, but it's not, you know, a, an anatomical frog hand, but this is not an anatomical frog, right? <laughs> this is our froggy. And he or she or they are going to be absolutely adorable. See what we've done here? We've basically made like a little mitten hand. And that's all I'm going to do for the hand. I'm going to get this string tied off. But that's the hand. Now doing the arm is going to be the same as doing the leg. I'm just going to roll it over for the lower arm. I'll go ahead and trim that. We're going to go in here and roll this really, 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 really tight. And then I will stitch up to the elbow. Then I will gather up all of this end here and this will be the upper arm like that. Do you see how this would work for all kinds of critters and people? I hope you do because I'm seeing it. <laughs> if you want to see more critters with these kinds of arms, let me know. All right. And I'm just going to stitch up. We'll start off with about five stitches. The arm is shorter than the, than the legs. I think I like that. I think I like that a lot. I'm going to go ahead and tie that off and drawstring this 
the top of the arm. So that's going to be this arm here. So I'm going to take his arm and attach it right up here, kind of under the eye on his side. And I'm going to go across the body, through the arm, across the body, about there. And I'm going to pull it kind of tight. Then I'm going to go I'm going to move over a couple stitches because basically I'm making a little bit of a hinge and, you know, for teddy bears and things like that. But I think part of the charm of this one is that it's all handmade. He's just all getting hand done. And I'm just going to stitch this off on his arm. I'm only stitching to the arm here. I'm not stitching to the body now. I'm just stitching this off, going through those stitches and then through the arm, coming out and snipping that off. Once your legs are done, you're, you're going to see that one is going to kind of tip to the right and one will tip to the left. So just put them on their appropriate sides. I like, I like the look of the toes kind of, kind of tipping in, especially on a little frog. And now I'm going to go out through the side of the leg here, because what I want to do is attach the leg down here through the body pinching this lower part of his body. All right. And since I do have both legs, I'm going to go ahead and put them both on at the same time with the same yarn. I don't have the second arm made yet. So, you know, I will get the second arm made and get it on, but might as well get the both legs, right? So you see what I'm doing here? I am pinching, whoops, I am pinching the body to get the legs right here. And I'm stitching or from the side through the leg, through the body, through the leg and back out. All right? Look at that. Now this is his back. He's laying on his tummy. His legs are stretched out. I'm going to go back through the leg, back through his body, back through the other leg, take an extra stitch. He's feeling a little bit loose-ish. There we go. Now I'm going to go out through the body, down through the body, and back into the leg. And just sort of make a couple long stitches through the leg. See, by doing the by doing the hinged legs, then your frog can actually sit. <laughs> that is so adorable. All right, I need to get his other arm made, get it sewn on, and then I'll show you how to really quick take a tube and make it into shorts. I don't know if I'm even going to stitch a mouth on. A black mouth isn't going to show up very well. And now we're gonna get his little trunks made. First off, I'm going to go like this and sort of stretch out. This is the cast on edge. I'm just going to stretch this out, run this cord back through just a bit. We're not doing any fancy finishing on this one. 
on this end because this is just going to be rolled over. We're not even putting any elastic. We're not doing any, you know, anything fancy. Nothing fancy here. I just want to make sure that it's stretched out as much as it needs to be. Take the tail and feed it through some of these stitches. See, you're getting a bonus garment also. <laughs> it's just a tube. It's about 20 rows long. It could be shorter. It doesn't have to be this long. See, I skipped the first one and I'm running it back through these loops here. Just a few. And now I'm going to get it stretched back out and just pull those, pull that through those. It's going to get crocheted over, so it doesn't really matter. So first up, we're gonna put the tube on. Right now, it looks like a, a, a bath wrap, doesn't it? I'm going to roll the top down. So the top is just rolled. And the bottom here, where the legs are, we just need to attach this together and it could be left with these little loopies. That would work. All right, I'm gonna use this bright pink just because that's what I have here on my desk. And I am going to make a slip knot. Kind of line this up. And I am going to go th not through, not I'm not catching this cord that's going through the loops. I'm catching a loop on both sides. And I'm going to bring my drawstring or my slip knot through there. And grab it like that. Now I'm going to go across to the next loop and I'm going to make a slip stitch. Just have to pick up that loop. There we go. Pick up the loop. We're going to make a slip stitch edge. Just pick up that bump. See, I can pull it off of him. We can now that we know exactly where everything is, now we can just pick up the pearl or that, that little uh, bump on the edge. See, just pick it up and slip stitch through it. See how it looks, eh? See if they fit, right? <laughs> Safety swimmers! Has the uh, life ring built in right here? Hey, there we go. All right. So I've got Mr. Hoppers and his little friend. I have not named his little friend yet. Tell me a name. Give me a name in the comments. What should Mr. Hopper's little friend be called? Thank you so much for being here with me. I really appreciate it. This project took me about three hours from start to finish. I hope that you enjoyed getting all of the tips and tricks and step-by-steps. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, go out, do something creative, take care of yourself, and be kind. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.